Hello, it's Marianne from Nordic Copper Design. Today I'm here with my very first tutorial. I'm going to show you how to edit a PSD mockup without Photoshop. Since I've started creating mockups, I've been looking into free programs and resources to find a tool that would give any of my clients the opportunity to use my creations to their fullest. And I finally found it in a free online program named Photopia. With Photopia, you don't have to download anything to your computer. To get started, all you have to do is go to www.photopia.com. Once you've accessed the website, select Open from Computer to access your purchased mockup. Open the file marked with 8-bit because the 16-bit version is currently not compatible with Photopia. On opening the file, you will find this little welcome note from me. You can delete the layer or just click it to blend it out, whatever you want to do. It's just a little introduction and a little help for you to get started with the mockup. To insert your own design, double click on the blue marked layer. A new file will open. Ignore this for a second and go to File, Open and then choose your design from your computer. Once it has opened, go to Layer, make a right mouse click and choose Duplicate Into. From the little pop-up, you select the file that has opened up before. Click OK. Your design has now been inserted into the Smart Object layer. Go to Edit, Free Transform and adjust it in size so it fits the way you want it to. I'm speeding the process up for the purpose of this tutorial, but as it's an online program, Photopia is not the fastest. To end this step, you go to File, Save, and choose the Smart Object version. The computer now calculates and inserts your design into the mock-up. When zooming in, we can see how nicely it fits in and how the design actually looks like it's below the semi-transparent washi tape. The only thing left to do now is to save the mock-up. Go to File, then choose Export As and select the format that you want and need. You're probably going to use JPEG because it's the most common. In this last window opening up, you can adjust the width and height of the image as well as the quality because the size of the image that I have provided you with is probably going to be too large for the platforms you are going to use it on. So I suggest you adjust it and make it smaller to fit, for example, the recommendations of Etsy. When you're finished, click Save and the file will be downloaded to your computer. These were all the basic steps you needed to know in order to insert one of your designs into my mockups. In case you would like to have more advanced options and would like to learn how to adjust the layer effects to perfectly suit your design, stay tuned. In order to achieve a natural look, it's very important that the Smart Object layer is set to Multiply. If it's set to Normal, you will just have this white sheet, which is not looking very nice and not natural at all. By setting it to Multiply, Photopia calculates it into the background, which makes it look so much more natural and like you've actually taken a photo of your design instead of inserted it into a mockup. Smart object layers are such an amazing feature in Photoshop or Photopia for that matter. They not only help you adjust any design to any shape you want, but you can also add layer effects. In this case, it's an outer glow and a drop shadow. 
When I tick them off, you can see that the design almost blends into the background. But I've inserted a small drop shadow and a slight outer glow to make it distinguish itself much more from the background and make the design pop. You can turn it on and off depending on how you think it looks best with your design. Having a full color or darker design is a little bit trickier. I always recommend you reduce the opacity a little bit because then it blends a lot better into the background. You have to know that the multiply tool only really works with white and bright backgrounds. I also suggest you play around with the effects. Double click to open the window to edit them. And I find that adding a larger or heavier drop shadow usually works wonders for darker or, or more colorful designs. You can see it here in the image when I'm playing around with the size and also the opacity. The design pops so much more immediately. It's a bit exaggerated because there is no drop shadow at all in nature, but you can use this type of effect for your designs in a mock-up. Just play around with it and see what you feel like works best for your image, your design, and also your brand style. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. If I have left any questions unanswered or if you have a suggestion for a future tutorial, please feel free to contact me. You can find me on Instagram under the handle at Nordic Cover Design or you can just write me an email to nordiccoverdesign at gmail.com.